Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here again. I want to take this moment to tell you why you should ignore all of the information and all of the advertising that you're going to get for this upcoming political season. We're talking about basically 2024. Or even when you start talking about, yeah, two years from now, it's 24. 23, 24, but we're talking about that, e that election. Don't focus on what the Republicans are going to say. It's all a waste of time. Don't focus on what the Democrats are going to say. It's all a waste of time. The message that I'm going to give to you is worth more, much more than any of those have to offer. The message that they bring it's nothing but division. The message that I bring is to draw you together by being in, dealing with truth. You see, uh, when you're dealing with truth, you find that it's a foreign language to most people. I remember years ago when I wasn't so caught up in truth my focus was on just being like everybody else, get what the system says is top and move on from there. <clears throat> and so what I happened to find out is that there was something else inside of me yearning that wanted to live. And uh, that was understanding why certain things happened all around me that weren't positive, weren't good, and yet they continue to exist. And it seemed as if there was nothing on earth that could stop it. Well, I remember that um, I had my an occasion out trying to pursue rainbows. I had a, an awakening. Somebody might say I woke up all this poverty that was working in Chicago. I'm working with the Veterans Administration, getting a little exposure to it because of the association with the veterans coming out of Vietnam and other places. So I made a decision that I wanted to do something about it. Now I was married at the time, had a wonderful life I think, but I uh, made a decision that uh, had not been a part of the conversation before my first marriage. And that was basically to become a voice for those who suffer from poverty. To, even though I grew up in poverty, but in order to speak for poverty now, during the times present, I must be knowing what I'm talking about. So I'm not just speaking what somebody telling me. I'm not just speaking what somebody's saying. I'm speaking what I know. And so I wanted to become part of the poor folks. And my wife, who didn't see things this way, she'd be working and paying the bills. She didn't see that stuff like that, so she opted to uh, exit that situation, which I understand, and I'm sure you do as well. And I had a, I got married a second time, and this wife, we've been together for almost 40 years, and she, for most of those 40 years, has supported this family. I thought it was because uh, I'm doing God's work and making no money, all of my time is donated, that uh, her working, maybe increasing salary here and there was God's way of blessing us. But even then, you know, things being as they are in the system, and it seems as if no money after all of this time is going to come in from me, maybe I should give this up. And even maybe the second wife might be thinking that. <clears throat> but I have to understand, I want to bring to you, that uh, even in the book, in the Bible, that we're talking about Job, say Job had a lot of good stuff, though. He even said Job was, I think, was rich almost. Uh, but he started going through some changes. And... I think, is that where somebody say he should curse God and die or something like that? I'm not sure exactly what it's something like that, but Job kept on having faith in God. And it reminds me of uh, some men more contemporary than that. For instance, Gandhi, if you ever watch the movie, I, I guess most of the stuff is true. I'm not certain, but that indicates that Gandhi, who had walked down the path to become somebody, an attorney, but they treated him like he was a native, a slave, or a nigger. 
that low life. And it caused so much disgust in him, it caused him to wake up. He woke up and decided to do something about the situation. And because he was somebody, really, and had married his wife, they had a problem with him. Because, you know, when you uh, have come up through the ranks that you're supposed to be somebody, you're expecting to live a certain kind of life. You don't expect to be going through no changes that other folks go through. So, <clears throat> because of what he represented, I think some part of the story said that she had to represent that she's no more than any of the other women. So her job would be to clean the little trail. I think I heard that that was a, a toilet. <laughs> and she just couldn't imagine cleaning the toilet. Uh, she was too big. He was too big. His, she, his wife, how can she gonna be out there cleaning a toilet? And uh, caused some problems there. I think they resolved them a little bit later on. But there was dissension there, you know. I even heard that it was uh, also with uh, Malcolm, Malcolm X. You know what Malcolm X represent. He had learned the truth. He woke up and started standing and giving truth representation. <clears throat> and the stuff that the world motivates on and moves on wasn't coming into him. He was coming into other people who played the game, but he wasn't playing the game, so it wasn't coming in. So there was some pain and suffering in the household. The wife was thinking he should kind of do something else. Everybody else getting paid. He chose not to. So there's dissension there. Always when we talk to doc, about Dr. King, Dr. King had the potential to be making all kinds of money, and his wife too. But he chose the path that he had been given. He accepted that path. And the money wasn't flowing in there. That was dissension. She wanted better. We all want better. But these men were serious. They were serious. They were murdered. Evidence that they were serious. Evidence that they were wonderful men teaching the rest of us how we should go. But every time we get in the situations, people are saying, give in, give in. Why? Because they don't know anything about the good life. They don't know anything about God. The uh, Republicans in America today, honestly, especially since Donald Trump came in the scene, as far as I can see, in my evaluation of this, they actually represent the devil. They just actually represent nothing but pain and suffering for so many other people. That's just fact. And that's why I say don't pay any attention to what they're talking about. It's just a bunch of lies. And now when we go to the Democrats. The Democrats, they're about the same thing as the Republicans. The difference is they are not as mean and dirty as the Republicans. See, Republicans, that's they might want to take all of any type of benefit that they think people of color get, they might just want to take them all from black people. Just take it all. That's what I'm saying about Republicans. The Democrats might want to say, well, we're going to let at least half of the black people receive some certain uh, entitlements or benefits. So they make them appear to be a little bit better than the Republicans. But for that other part that's getting left out, there's no difference. And that's the way God sees it. There's no difference especially when there is a way. And so that is why God gives individuals information to come and share with you, you the people. Um, I was thinking about these problems that we have everywhere. Then just as I'm thinking this, I, on the news a bulletin comes on, there's an earthquake in Turkey. Now was that something that happened today or was that a, something on social media that happened sometime in the past. But anyway, if what had happened today or sometime in the past, thousands of people, it was one of the worst earthquakes, I think, about in a, in a century. And thousands of people, couldn't have been a day, because they were saying that thousands of people lost their lives, so it had to have been an early evening. But as I was watching, I'm watching buildings, whole buildings falling down. Buildings, people in buildings, living in buildings, like, like Putin bombing you. Ukraine, just tearing up, destroying, and I'm thinking, wow, how can we as people be prepared to deal with something like that? This stuff happens, and we're so far to becoming enemies to ourselves. When you think about the Republicans and Democrats in America, what are they all about? Division, division. What is the system about? 
division, division. What do you think capitalism is about? Division, division is about money. It's about money. It's about com 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 competing. It's about d distinguishing some better than others. And the distinction for better gets this or that and lesser gets this or that. All of the stuff, thinking from mankind, crazy, heartless people. But see, it's simple. I come to tell you this. God made it so simple as a crying shame. I'm just going to tell you. All of the resources that are used to do anything that mankind has ever done, is doing, and ever will do, were given to humankind, given to the earth, to humankind, or anybody, or anything that can use it may have access to it. And this was free. No living force had anything to do with any of this resources that's on this natural resources that's on this earth. It's a given. You didn't buy. It's a given. And no one has any more right to any of it more than a, a, another. I don't care what kind of systems you come up with. When men know this, you won't be able to do this. When you can lie to them and tell them stupid stuff and they believe it, then you'll always be bumping their heads against the wall. But God gave it to every human being on the face of the earth, not just Americans, but Africans too. South Americans, Guatemala, all those people everywhere. China, North Korea, you name it, gave it to all of us. Now, as we think of those resources, we know the goods and services that have been determined by human beings that are essential for survival, and those are the things we deal with. So, out of all of the human beings on earth, there is something that's going to be created that at least every last one of us would benefit from. No doubt would benefit from. Now, how can every last one of us play a part in this so that we won't be missing anything? The equation says if you're going to benefit from it, then play a part in the process of producing it. If you're going to eat it, help grow it. And if you're doing it, then all things that are created by the hands of men belong to humankind to access as they need, want, or desire. It's theirs. It's a partnership with the God using these resources and letting the spirit that represents you represent all of us because it's an invisible spirit that gives us an opportunity to show our appreciation by not being a problem for you. And we don't let nothing come and interfere with that. And since we have experienced stuff in our lifetime, we've seen how the maggot people who make America great come in and lie and do all kinds of things. We see how Russia goes over there and want to mess over Ukraine and bombing these people, killing these people, tearing these buildings up and doing everything just like a monster. We see how North Korea does this thing, how China's doing this thing. We see how we as Americans do our thing, how divided we are, how crazy we act. So we don't have to act, wonder what path we on. We know what path we on. But I'm trying to tell you later, how to, how, I'm showing you how to get off that path. Now you get everything you need, you want, your desires met. Food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, transportation, anything. And there's no money in it. That money stuff divides you. You got the rich, you got the poor. You got those that got them that don't got. You got people struggling. You got people chasing. You got all of that hell going on. Now, I come to tell you that God said this is crazy. And this message that I give you allows you, if you accept it, to free yourself from that. And not be playing this game with these Republicans and Democrats talking about vote for me, vote for me, vote for me. Give me your mind so I can tell the world how good I'm going to be to you. No, I'm trying to tell you this. What I have just told you, if you are worthy of it, if you're deserving of it, you will tell the world. And I'm not asking you for no money to tell anybody. I'm telling you right now. And if you're worthy, I don't have to say a thing, anything else. You can say it for it. Because the truth, you can speak for the truth. 
I don't have to be Ted going around saying it. It's truth. You speak it. You just hear it. Mean it if you know it. And we can change things. Other than that, you don't deserve nothing but what you got. So stop playing games, ladies and gentlemen. Stop playing games. So I think I'll leave it there. You know it's a day is long, so I will be back, no doubt about that. Till then, Eddie Marcus saying goodbye.